Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1453. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We want to see how to count customer totals between upper and lower limits for each month. Now, here's our data set with all of our customers. Control down arrow. We have 81 customers, control home. Right down here, we have a sales table, date, customer ID, and sales. Our goal is to create this cross tabulated table where at the head of each row is the month, and at the top of each column is a sales category. So for any intersecting cells, we actually have to somehow, for all 81 customers, figure out for that particular month, what their total sales are. That's adding up all of the customer sales from this table. And then we need to count how many from all 81 customers for this particular month fell into this category, meaning they bought greater than 1,000 and less than or equal to 2,000. And then we have to, of course, have the formula to do that for each sales category and each month. Now, the problem with doing this with array formulas is we're going to have a lot of array calculations in each cell. And anytime you have array formulas that have to calculate over many cells in large ranges, you will get slower and slower calculations the larger the data sets. Now, in this video, we're going to see array formulas. Next video, we'll see the answer to how to solve this with really large data sets, and that is to use a DAX measure. Power Pivot, Power BI Desktop, and DAX measures were invented specifically to deal with big data. Now, the array formula solution, if we look at this data set, control down arrow, we only have 3,000 rows. The array formula solution will work fine on a data set this small. But anything above 10,000, you will start to get really slow calculations. Now, this array formula is still worthy of checking out. There's some useful array formula tricks we'll see. And if you have a small data set and you want your formula to update instantly when source data changes without having to refresh, then array formulas are fine. Now, let's go over to the start sheet here, and we want to see how to do this. Now, the real problem with this formula is that Every single cell is going to have to have a list of all the totals for all 81 customers. Right here, it needs to be only the April total sales for all these customers. And we need to only count for this sales category. When we come over here, we're counting for this sales category. So really, internally inside this formula, every cell is going to need to have a list or a table of 81 customer totals. Now, over in DAX, as we'll see in the next video, that's pretty easy to do. But here in Excel, yes, it's possible, but it's going to take a wild array formula to do this. Now, before we worry about row header and column header criteria, let's just see if we can get inside a single cell totals from this for just all 81 customers. No problem. We can use the sum ifs function. Now, the sum range we want to add from the sales column. So click in the top cell, Control Shift down on F4 to lock it in all directions, comma. Now, we're dealing with customers off the bat, so we're going to have to look through the customer ID column. Same dimensions as the sales column, Control Shift down on F4, comma. And normally what we do with some ifs is we give it a single criteria. So I could give it exactly one customer. But that is not what we want, because some ifs would just spit out one answer. Remember, we're after a table of 81 answers in every single cell. So in the criteria one argument, we'll just put all the customer names. So the cell is selected. You could see the dancing ants, Control, Shift, Down, Arrow, F4 to lock it. Now, this is called a function argument array operation. We gave it 81 customer IDs. So some ifs will deliver 81 answers, one for each customer. Now, let's come to the end, close parentheses, and we're going to use the F9 key to evaluate this. 
And look at that, 81 overall customer totals. Now, that's not what we're after yet because we haven't incorporated the criteria for month. But that means we have in Excel the ability to deliver a table of values. That's actually the word we'd use in DAX. Over here, we call this a resultant array of answers. Internally, in our formula now, we can analyze these customer sales totals. Control Z to undo that. Now, even though we have a function argument array operation delivering 81 answers, we can go on and add criteria range 2, criteria 2, criteria range 3, and so on. Not only that, but the criteria can be a single cell. Notice for this entire row, we have to look through the dates and say, hey, date, are you greater than or equal to the lower? And are you less than or equal to the upper? That means that even though that's a function argument array operation with many elements, we can add the single cell criteria elements in criteria two and three. So come to the end, comma, criteria range two, that's going to be the date column. Click in the top cell. Control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it in all directions. Now I'm going to click on criteria range 2 and control C because I'm going to use it a second time. Click at the end, comma. Now our criteria 2, well, I would like that date right there. And as I copy this to the side, I need it locked on H8. But as I copy it down, I need it to move to H9 and then 10. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times to lock the H. That's the column reference, but not the row reference eight. Now, what I really want is I need to ask the question, how many of you over here are greater than or equal to this? So before the cell reference, in double quotes, I have to put my comparative operator, greater than symbol, equal, and double quotes, and then join it using Shift-7, the ampersand. Now we have our complete criteria that are greater than or equal to the lower limit. Come to the end, comma, criteria range 3, control V. That's just the date range we copied earlier, comma. Here for criteria 3, in double quotes, I have to ask the question, how many of you are less than or equal to, in double quotes, ampersand, and now I'm going to click on the upper date. Same thing here, F4 key once twice, and a third time. Column reference locked, row not. Now I want to enter this formula and copy it throughout the rectangular range and just check out this. This is actually a dynamic, either resultant array or table. And in each cell, we'll have different values. Actually, the row will have the same number of values. Control Enter. And I'm just going to copy it. This is not correct and down. And I can pick any particular cell, F2 to put in an edit mode, F9 to evaluate. And those are the customer totals just for this one month. Notice these values will be the same, F2, F9, in each cell in this row. But when I go down, F2, F9, there's a different set for this new month. Now, here's the crazy thing. We actually have to take that whole resultant array and ask the question, how many of you in that range are greater than the lower and less than or equal to the upper limit? And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to have to use this sum ifs delivering that resultant array. We're going to use it two different times in our formula. So I'm going to highlight and Control C. Now I'm going to come to right before some ifs, scroll over a bit here, and we're going to put parentheses at the beginning and come to the end. And right after the resultant array, I'm going to say, how many of you are greater than our lower limit? Now, that's J6. As I copy down, I need it locked on J6. But as I copy it to the side, I need it to move to each one of the new lower limits. So I'm going to hit the F4 key once and twice to lock the row, but not the column. Now close parentheses, and I want to hit the F9 key. Those are the trues and falses 
saying that we found a total sale that's greater than 0 for the month of January. Now, we still have to add our second condition and then multiply the two resultant arrays to get our count. But we're going to use the sum product function to multiply the two arrays. And sum product does not understand trues and falses. So Control-Z, we need to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. Now, you can do that with any math operation, but we're going to use double negative. Double negative, especially on big arrays, in general works faster than our other math operations. Now, why do we have to put parentheses? Because we needed a comparative operator to calculate before the double negative. And comparative operators are way at the bottom of the order of precedence for calculating Excel formulas. Now I'm going to click at the end in F9. Now we have our ones and zeros for the lower limit, Control-Z. Now I want to put some product function at the beginning. Array 1, those are the ones and zeros for the lower limit. Now I come to the end, comma, and in Array 2, I'm going to put double negative, open parentheses, Control V. That's our result in array sum ifs. And I ask the question, how many of you are less than or equal to our upper limit? Now I'm going to hit the F4 key once and twice and close parentheses. That's array 2. Now another interesting thing about this formula, notice we use a direct comparative operator against the entire sum ifs and then put our cell. That's much different than inside sum ifs and count ifs and those types of formula with our criteria. You actually have to put them in double quotes and join them, but not when you're doing a direct array operation like this. Now, in every single cell, we'll have ones and zeros for the lower and ones and zeros for the upper. Sum product will do its job. It'll take array 1 times array 2. And only when there's a 1 in this and a 1 in this does the actual customer total fall between our upper and lower limit. Now, this is an array formula with lots of array calculations. But because we used sum product, that argument, array 1, array 2, and so on, those can handle array operations without the special keystroke Control-Shift-Enter. So we can either use Enter or Control-Enter. And there's our count. That's the actual count for January in our first sales category. Now I can copy it to the side, double click, and send it down. Very importantly, notice it took a while to calculate because that's a lot of array calculations there. But I need to come to the diagonally furthest one away, hit F2. I'm checking to see if all of the cell references are working. And sure enough, even the one over here, all the cell references are working. Wow, that's a wild array formula for counting in a cross-tabulated table where we're counting customer totals for each month in a given sales category. Now in our next video, 1454, we'll see the same report using DAX formulas and a pivot table. Now if you like this video, click that thumbs up, comment, and sub so you'll know when the next video is coming out. And we'll see you next video.